and Absolutely. like heading in hood of the car and the guy the police officer he asks him if he knows him and then he says no when he actually really like had a deep connection with him but then when he felt like betrayed he didn't say that he knew him yeah so that was the resolution right what did you feel about yeah. that I felt like I felt kind of bad for the other guy because it's like they've been through so much together that he just decides to not do anything. You mean for easy? Yeah. 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 Talk about the foreshadowing. That's a term in, in writing. Where was that foreshadowed? Anyone give, give us the scene? Do you remember when Easy said to Abdi, you're just a climber like all the rest? And they were, uh, I think they were cooking together. Oh no, it was that exchange when he said, what do you want? And you go back to that, let's, let's dig into that scene a bit because that's, would you say that that is the turning point? where the so in stories right we have the the rise of the story and then we have the moment that where it climaxes and maybe change and changes is there another point in the story would um, that you might think is the turning point let's talk about that um rachel Oh, wait, Nina has a hand up. Go ahead. And Peyton's coming in. There we are. Go ahead, Nina. Let's talk about the turning point. What was the turning was point bit, for you? I was a bit confused throughout the uh, film, but I think um, when, uh, I'm not sure what the names are. But it's Easy. Uh, Easy is the, the man who's the, the landlord and the, the respected man. And then Abdi is the young man. Okay. So I think when um, Abdi was like waiting outside uh, the building uh, for Izzy, uh, I think that um, obviously it took uh, Abdi a couple tries to get him to like, um, you know, allow him to go inside. Mm -hmm. But I think once he did, I think that kind of shifted everything because that was like the start of their, um, I guess the relationship that they had. That's yeah. Why. Yeah, yeah, so that, that he made it difficult. Why do you think he made it so difficult when he actually had a room to rent? What, what, what did he, was there anything that seemed strange to you about that? What was he, what was he doing? Go ahead, Nina, dig into it a little bit well, more. Well, he had the, the room open for him, right? I think but he said that it wasn't it was taken i think right i'm or not just, sure but yeah i think he was really questioning him i think he was questioning his name also yeah mm -hmm. is there anybody that remembers the country of origin that easy uh suggested abdi was from do you remember yeah dana was it africa Mm -hmm. In a particular country within Africa. Like, is it Africa? Maybe it was Nigeria. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. He says that's that's a Nigerian name, and um, I was suspecting that um, Easy is also Nigerian. Do you think he was questioning? Uh, that the young man was Nigerian? Maybe, maybe, I'm not sure. I'm not sure he might have been. I, I thought he might have been questioning him, but he's a young man. And, and so uh, I think Izzy took pity on him because we also learned from Izzy. What did we learn about Izzy? His character was shown throughout. What, what qualities would you name to I Izzy?
Scarlett or Peyton? What qualities would you name? Ah, Rachel, hand raised. Go ahead, Rachel. Well, I would say that he is hardworking and caring because he cares for the young man that comes to live with him. Like in this, in the movie, he kind of mentions that he doesn't really contribute much and that he does everything for him, like makes him food, found him a place to work and everything like that. So I definitely say that um, he's caring. Yeah, nice. Dana, did you have some more qualities you wanted to name? Yeah, I said that he was like, he was caring, but I feel like he kind of showed a different side of him when he was with Abdi. But then when he was like with other people, he was kind of like meaner and like didn't really show his nice side. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, right. He made people show their authentic side. You know, he really seemed like he had a, a strong meter for truth, right? Nina, your hands up. And then we'll come to you, Scarlett. Go ahead, Nina. Um, I definitely agree that he was, he did have like a caring side to him, but I also think that he was a bit aggressive. Like he was an aggressive person. Whenever, like if you were to ever get angry, I think it'd be pretty bad to be around him because like I said, he was so aggressive and he was very, I guess you could say passionate in a way. Mm -hmm. Passionate's a good word. Um, yeah, maybe experienced. You can imagine. Go ahead, Dana. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. To add, I feel like uh, to add, I just feel like Abdi kind of brought out the goodness in him. Ah, okay, like, that's nice. Because at the start of the movie, he was like, "No, we're not doing this," and he wasn't really like compliant with other people. Mm hmm. Okay, nice. And and uh, oh, Scarlet, there you are. Go ahead, Scarlett. Um, I would say, like, yeah, he's, like, overprotective and stuff. And I also wanted to add that, like, they showed us this movie in school a couple years ago. Oh. And I think he's, like, really similar to one of the characters that was in it. That it's the I movie called The Outsiders. And he's, like, and he, I thought he was similar to the oldest brother because... The oldest brother was like was really like harsh to his younger brothers but he really just wanted to like keep them safe but he would like take it out on them in anger and stuff like that uh when they when they um, showed inauthenticity or uh didn't show a strong enough side he would he would get angry at them okay wow that's um that's a teacher at, at what what moment did you see that Abdi was beginning to, to listen and learn from Izzy? Was there, was there a point? What, what, scene, what scene do you think with it? Uh, uh, Abdi was really invested in his relationship with Izzy. Dana. When um, Izzy was like on the floor, like in front of like some like ball and he was like looking in on him. Yeah, and he said, he said, Izzy became, began to become dark and show dark moods. Yeah. Yeah, so things changed there as well. Um, what do you think was happening? Anyone have an idea of what might be happening? Do you think he, uh, Dana, go ahead. Maybe he was like praying or like doing some kind of like meditation maybe because things were like bad in his life. And trying to get there. He was really being pushed to the edge, wasn't he? I mean, losing, what did he say he wanted? In that, con remember that conversation was really strong. And Abdi says, what do you mean? What a silly question to ask what I want. And someone who's, Abdi's age might not really know what that means, but what did, what did Izzy respond? When Abdi asked him that question, what do you want? I'm trying to remember like what was sure. the movie, but I was 
there's so much going on. I don't really like, yeah. I can't really remember. That's all, that's all right. They're, 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 they're working together. He's, and, and Abdi says, why do you even bother? He says, well, there's, there was water damage. Why do we even bother? And so that's when he asks, well, what do you want? And Abdi says, well, to get another place, to go back to university, to, so he names that he wants to climb, right? He says he wants to keep going and do other things. He says, I don't know, what would anybody else want? What would el anybody else tell you? And then Izzy says, all I want is what I have. It's pretty simple, it's pretty simple, but yet that is also being taken away from him. You remember earlier in the conversations, they um, speaking about how social housing was moved. Who remembers that? Mm -hmm. That was really indicative of, of the story and that gave you a, a really rich kernel of, of information. There's I actually have that written down as a motif and the mention of horizon and the symbolism of horizon correlating to each of the characters idea of what they want. Abdi has the horizon, the, the dreaming is endless. The, uh, he even says something about dreaming. Um, and I think I wrote it down. I can't remember. Abdi um, has that, has the dream. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. Uh, dreamed beyond exist. Or yeah. So he was dreaming beyond his own existence. And I think that correlates to the idea of the horizon. Whereas uh, Izzy really um, is focused on what he has, which is the horizon and the, the literal horizon. And he's trying to preserve that for his own community and the building that he takes pride in and helps and supports and physically fixes the buildings. I thought it was such a beautiful motif mm. um, to kind of tie in the whole characterization and the theme. Yeah, yeah, that's nice, Kate. That's nice. And the government stood up for that at one point and said, you're not moving these people again. What, what, let's talk about the, the, the injustice here. What is the, what is the injustice? Is it um, preventing someone from having a, a, a view from which they can dream? or thinking that lives are so movable and expendable because they are immigrant lives. And who's deserving of the best view, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Why was there a need or a sense of, oh, this um, refugee or immigrant population has a really valuable piece of land right now let's move them uh, because that land is valuable and is reserved for whom? Um, and moving them frequently, what, how is that justifiable to the, the population of the group that is essentially um, dictating where this group of people lives? And I think it's interesting too, the villain in the story or the antagonist in this story is unshown. It's, we're not we don't mm -hmm. see it it's a concept it's an um it's they're it's not even worthy that they're they're they don't even have the time to show up to address the people that they're directly affecting yeah right? yeah i think I'm I, start. no I, I think it's really great i think it's it's they don't show up but it's in every one of them it's it's a a, a sort of a, a unified or unified to the wrong word a collective um antagonist really and that antagonism is is well it's racism and 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 value yeah um and not placing value that was a, a note that i made when uh, abdi realized his value in supporting izzy in the demonstrations 
against the building, against the construction. And he, in fact, he says to him, you know, it does my participation have no value? I don't think that's a direct quote, but um, when Izzy is starting, is in his dark moods and trying to, um, things are breaking down, then, then Abdi is feeling not valued. So this is a, this is a huge uh, turning point. But we see that um, Izzy has tremendous power in the community. And it's because he, he believes in making a home and having simply what he has. Oh. What would you say to a friend about this film? Anyone? Nina, thanks. I think I would say something like, um, if you were to watch this film, you have to, I think you have to really pay attention to what's happening. Like, and you have to, you know, try and find the deeper meaning behind everything. Because I think it's more, there's more below the surface than you can tell. And the relationships between the characters are also very important to understand. Um, and I think the ending was kind of, something that you wouldn't exactly expect yeah so i think it was i thought although i had a hard time like following what was happening i think mm. the end, like i think it was a good film good thank you dana and then rachel i would also tell someone like you have to understand their backgrounds because that kind of justifies how they feel and what they do mm -hmm. like their actions so you see in the beginning like um Oh, what's his name? Not Abdi, but... Izzy, the older man? Yeah. He, like, had a hard time because he was, like, running his business and he had a lot on his plate. So it kind of, like, justifies how he might feel and what he might do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. So you were able to understand from what you know about immigrant, immigrants' lives. Yeah. Good, good. So you brought that to the fore. That's the gorgeous thing about art you bring what you know to it and then it tells you other information, gives you more information. Thanks, Dana. Rachel. So like during the film at the end, I remember during your film about how one of the people said, oh, it's my, the taste of my film starts out different than it ends. And mm -hmm. with this film, I felt like I saw that in there because you didn't really didn't expect that ending. Right. Um, but if I were to tell someone about this, well, not exactly tell them, but because I feel like it would ruin it. But I think the idea that um, even though Izzy has a lot of power in the community, it doesn't matter in the end because no one says that he even knows him, not even the guy that he's living with. So I think that maybe if I was having a discussion with someone after, that was something that I'd want to talk about. Mm hmm yeah. Can I just tack on to that, Rachel, because I think that was such a beautiful way to look at this film. And I think it really touches on the intersection of otherness and uh, many terms that we're going to actually be looking at in ninth grade, otherness, bystander, upstander. And there's an intersection of not only refugees, immigrants, uh, people of color, but also sexual orientation here. Mm -hmm. And there's a layer of otherness in some of the characters that um, justifies or explains the reactions to certain scenarios, right? Um, if, if a character has an identity that automatically gives, puts them in a position of power or privilege, um, they might feel empowered to speak up on behalf of another person and put themselves in harm's way or risk their own um, or, or express their own voice and have their voice heard. Whereas somebody who's new to the country, who's a refugee, who's come from an environment that is um, riddled with conflict or dangerous, and they have seen firsthand violence 
or felt endangered, then when approached with another situation in a country other than their own or, or original country, um, they might be less likely to feel empowered to be an upstander, even if it's for somebody who supported them and been a companion to them um, up until that point. And I think it's a really interesting moment and it was beautiful, the dialogue that they used uh, forgiveness is an erosive thing yeah and mm. w what an idea and he um abdi keeps reflecting on that moment and it is a moment you know do you know this man and he finally screams no i do not know him and it's such a powerful um goosebumpy moment because you feel that conflict and you can't take it back it's too late. It's already yeah. been said it's and done. it's out there. Yeah. The unspoken pardon of a friend's betrayal. Wow. That's such a complex sentence, isn't it? Yeah, that was the last word. What um, I think it would be interesting. And if, if you do in your journals, um, write what happens or write a different ending for this how how could it be that might be um something you want to you know write in your own journals about that and or uh, even how abdi would rewrite it if he could right yeah and i think actually we saw, and i didn't catch this the first time i saw it the the entrance to the film is abdi remembering it's a year later and he's gone back to the ruins of of the social housing yeah i didn't even think about that yeah and even the coloration um of the scenes and the lighting lenses um the red alley versus the blues of the somber scenes mm -hmm. or the the very the warmth of the happier scenes and even abdi's clothing choices he's wearing an orange hoodie and a purple hat and yeah. i may be reading too much into this but i think there's something to be said that they're not primary colors and um um, Izzy was wearing primary colors throughout. And I think it's an interesting uh, contrast, the symbolism of blue and what that elicits versus orange and what that elicits and the transition throughout. Sure. I think there's so much to read into this film. And I think you're right, Nina, that it is, um, it's subtle and it's emotionally driven. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, you know, uh, Ms. Kavanaugh, when you talk about watching international films and just kind of accepting that confusion at times and mm -hmm. riding the wave and just letting it seep in. I think this is a great film to kind of practice that skill. That's nice, that's nice. And this is why The Recollector is so powerful because things like this just keep working in your, in your memory. And the more the, the, the five of you might talk to each other about it and and how about this? Now, in your thinking of your life as a tree, there is a marker now that you've all seen this film together and, and it's put into your memories at the same time. So that's um, something in your lifetimes that's what we call maybe a milestone or a marker, a memory marker. And, um, and these cornerstone memories can continue to contribute to the person you become. So you all have started with this film in your memories at this age. And I think that's um, something valuable to return to whenever, when you're at your high school reunion 20 years from now, you might say, do you remember that film? And how did it live in your life? And what maybe, uh, how did it help you make decisions? Uh, uh, that that came later. Um, it is ten thirty six, Kate. <laughs> and uh, get taken away with good conversations, right? Right, <laughs> right, right, right. Well, so, this is wonderful as always, and thank you again for putting this together. And what a great film to watch! I think mm. it leaves a lot to think about and percolate over for sure. Yeah, yeah, and then look for other films by D. Reese. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, Mud, you said, is the other one, right? Uh, Mudborn? Mudborn? Okay. I think it, I'll, I'll find that point. It's actually in the write-up, uh, or is it? No. Yeah, no, 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 you did, yeah, you send that to me. 
Pariah is in the film, uh, or it, it's her first feature after this. And that's also uh, about a girl who's coming out to her family, her African-American family. And actually the, act, the, the director had a scene in this film. She mm. was one of the neighbors who gathered. She was close shaven with big gold earrings. Yes, 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 yes. Yep, uh, orange shirt, I want to say, or a yeah. red shirt. Yeah, so, yeah, and and so that's uh, and she's British, as it turns out. You could hear, oh, maybe she had a British accent, but I'm just guessing uh, that she is British. But um, so there we are. Dee Reese introduction. She's new for me too. I'm um, happy to have seen Mudborn. I think Mudborn. Okay. Yeah, we'll have to check that out. Yeah. Um, and ladies, we'll do the, um, I'll give you time on Monday to complete the analysis for this film. And then uh, we'll do the recollector for um, our, our the last film. For what does your Monday film taste too. like? Yes, yeah. exactly. Up. Exactly. Up. So we'll do that on Tuesday because we don't meet on Monday. My, my apologies. Um, all right, ladies, All right. thank you so much. Thanks for coming. Uh, have a wonderful weekend, everybody. Yeah. Um, and, and thank you, Ms. Cavanaugh, for doing this again. I appreciate it so much. It was so it's great. It's my pleasure. My pleasure. Yeah. And talk about us. Instagram yes, about course. us, please. Of course. <laughs> I will. I will. I, I didn't even know you had an Instagram until you mentioned it earlier. So we do. I'll call we you do. on there and, and shout out for sure. <laughs> We've got it all. And we're thinking about doing an event on Twitch. Do any of you watch Twitch? Use Twitch? It's more I'm not of a, hip enough for that. Yeah. It's more <laughs> of a gamer. It's more of a gamer site. And um, uh, Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez just was playing a game there and talking to gamers. And that was pretty smart. And Nina's shaking and <laughs> nodding her head. You saw her. Yeah, it was pretty cool that she did that. But, um, some young people I know uh, play music on Twitch. They have concerts, uh, COVID uh, concerts. Take a look at them. It's the complex. I'll write that here in San Francisco. Okay. Yeah. That's complex awesome. concerts. Uh, and uh, I took care of the two people uh, running that George and his sister Lulu and together they have a band called the whatever glades the whatever glades the whatever Where? glades I'll check them out that's yeah. very cool I'm always looking for good new music um all right ladies class is over for today um thank you and have a wonderful weekend okay we'll chat on Tuesday about this Thanks, take care. Maya Manser is another one. All my kids who have musical, my friends who have musical kids. <laughs> Maya Manser? Maya Manser, I put her in the chat too. Okay, perfect. Oh. Awesome. Thank you so much and have a wonderful weekend and uh, see you guys uh, okay. next week. And uh, Katie, I will see you November. What did um, we say? November 9th. November 9th, I will see you. Perfect. Great. Awesome. And thank you. And we'll be in touch, I'm sure, before Good. then. Good, All good. Right, bye. And thanks. Thank bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you for having us.